Welcome back to South Florida Voices. Voices. The Strand versus Escambia County case uh, is having a major impact on how CRAs operate in the state of Florida. Eric Haynes is here from the Lauderdale Lake CRA who's going to tell us how that case is impacting us here in South Florida. Eric, welcome to South Florida Voices. Thank you, thank you for having me. Here. Now, the Strand versus the Escambia case has a lot to deal with financing right. in regards to CRA. Give us a little snapshot of what this case is all about. Well, what this case is all about in terms of what CRAs, the state allowed communities to start a, a community redevelopment agencies to go out and, and cure the slum and blight in the communities. And you do that by what they call the, the, the difference between the taxes, the tax increases every year. What has happened in Escambia County, they've gone out and they've created their own special taxing district without following the guidelines that the state laid out for CRAs. How did that happen? Who well, did that? Well, I, I think it was the county commission. Okay. They, they took it upon themselves to say, hey, we need a special taxing district because they wanted to make improvements in a particular area of town mm -hmm. and without raising taxes. And they figured we can do this and just mm -hmm. float some bonds and mm -hmm. we'll use some increment financing to pay for it. Mm -hmm. However, they went about the process entirely wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, versus what a CRA would do, where we have um, public public hearings and everything else like that, sitting down with the county, putting out a detailed written plan as to what we plan to do in the areas, mm -hmm. and um, as a result of that, they were challenged in court by um, by a resident, Dr. Gregory Strand, mm -hmm. and. Um, he was able to appeal the decision made in the lower court with the Supreme Court that pretty much said, hey, you can't use tax increment financing to, to pay for bonds or lines of credit. And we're waiting on uh, this to be uh, approved or implemented in the future. And what it's really saying is it's, it's going to, if accepted, it's going to ask the community their opinion about how the funds should be spent. So right now, as a voter, we're not being asked if CRA could spend this money a certain way. Is that correct? That's correct. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and that's that's exactly what the what the decision is doing. And it will be taking it back to the voters. However, there's a critical step mm -hmm. in, in in that the voters have already been involved in the process with the with the proper creation of a CRA. Okay. Because in order to form a CRA, you have to have public hearings, you have to get the community involved and say, hey, this is what we plan to do. Community participation is involved and everything like that. And the community leaves understanding that when the CRA is created, mm -hmm. that you will be able to use these funds to go out and redevelop the area. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's, it's just bypassing that whole process. Starting but if, if it was already created and the CRA's got approval, is this adding another layer or a step of approval? Uh, yes, it is. Okay. It's, it's by sending it back for, for referendum, mm -hmm. it's adding a, another step on it, which will uh, severely debilitate the CRE's ability. To and in what way? What, what's going to happen from a time period standpoint? Because these things need to happen right away. As voters, we're probably going to see another issue on our ballots, right, correct? Right, right. You'll okay. see another issue on your ballot. If, if, the, if the decision stands with the Supreme Court, you'll see another issue on the ballot. I mean, they um, be asking you to approve the transaction that we're about to enter into. So if we wanted to buy a piece of property and we needed to, to float bonds in order to do that, mm -hmm. uh, we would have a contract with a, a willing and able seller. And all of a sudden now we have to freeze that deal and wait six, eight months and try to sell the community on, hey, approve this bond so we can do this deal. In the free market, a buyer's not, a seller, a, a, a free willing seller is not going to wait along that. So is, is this going to be the first time that a community would be hearing about this issue in that example that you use? You're saying going back to the community, but if you're already talking to them about it, how is this going to help uh, well, in the future? Well, you know, the, the thing about it, I really don't see how it, how it, how it benefits at all. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, because there again, the community would get a chance to, to have a say in it a second time. Okay. And, and at that time, you lose the opportunity because what CRAs are doing, we're competing against the free market. So, I mean, if you want to go out and buy the same piece of property that we're interested in, mm -hmm. uh, you get an advantage because now the seller is going to be more willing to deal with you because now we have to go through this extra hurdle mm -hmm. to take it right back to the voters and, and, and lose out. Now, you're representing the Lauderdale Lake CRA, and in particular, there's a project yes. that's of concern to you in Bella Vista, a library. Right. Describe that an issue for us. Well, Bella Vista, I mean, Lauderdale Lakes has been looking to have a, uh, its own library. I mean, we've already had a, a local neighborhood library, but now these new super libraries, what I call them, that the okay. county is participating in, uh, we're getting a 10,000 square foot library within our community. Um, 
our community saw fit to say, hey, why not make our library 20,000 square feet? Mm -hmm. As a result of that, the county pays 50% of the cost. Our library is costing us $6 million. So the county would, Broward County would pay $3 million of that cost. And now the CRA would be responsible for paying the remaining $3, $3 million of that. Mm -hmm. uh, what we had hoped to do was use our tax increment financing as our pledge source to go out and secure loans, construction financing, to, to take care of that part. Okay. With this decision, if we have to go to referendum and we're in the process of doing construction now, we would have to utilize that cash money that we have to pay for this, which will you know, prohibit us from doing any more projects within the uh, CRA area. Now, we're still waiting for this case to come through um, the Supreme, Supreme Court. Yeah. What steps do you take now, or are you just waiting? Well, right now we're waiting. We're, we're pursuing a lot of different options just in case the Supreme Court reverses themselves. But as you know, once the Supreme Court makes a decision, it becomes law. Okay. So in, in all technical senses, we're, we pretty much can't do anything right now until the court uh, clarifies its position. Mm -hmm. And so just by every CRA in the state of Florida is put on hold right now. Bella Vista, very quickly tell us about that area right. in particular. Bella Vista is a great project. It's a $150 million project that would not have taken place if we didn't have a CRA. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, uh, the investment just wouldn't have been made. It's going to consist of uh, right around 300 townhomes. Uh, we had a condo component in there, but the condo market is tanking right now. So mm -hmm. we just work with the developers to they kind of like uh, redesign the project, the scope of the project. We have over 47,000 square feet of commercial space. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a big village green in the area, and the, and the library is going to be the focal I point. See. Okay, so we're just going to wait and see, got a plan uh, B in action in case it goes either way to continue uh, this project because it won't stop. Will it? Right. No, it won't <laughs> stop, and we're committed to moving forward. I okay. mean, we will find a way. We're okay. just hoping that the court okay. reverses itself. Great. Well, good luck uh, with your projects coming up, and thank you for sharing uh, this information with thank us. Thank you for inviting me. You're, you're quite welcome. Right. Stay tuned, and we'll be back for more South Florida Voices.